Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's uh, Industrial Cybersecurity. Our very special guest, uh, Giovanni from Kapersky Industrial Cybersecurity, will be presenting uh, mostly to you today. Uh, my name is Scott Cortier. I'm Senior Technical Sales with IndieSoft. I'm going to give you the brief introduction, which I'm doing now, and then I'm going to cover real quickly uh, just some of the security features that you can find in IndieSoft Web Studio. Uh, not really cybersecurity related. Giamatti is going to cover that type of uh, information, but more about the built-in security features in IndieSoft Web Studio. Then I'll hand it over to Giovanni and let him uh, present away. So what I want to cover today is just some of the security features in IndieSoft Web Studio. This is not an exhausting list, just uh, some of the things that I thought might be relevant. Uh, I want to talk about these topics here. So the first one is the remote agent. So let me um, bring in IndieSoft Web Studio here and uh, pop this open full screen. A lot of times if you're developing or debugging on, let's say, your laptop, you're going to be running in this local management mode. If you use the uh, remote management tools, you can connect and download and start and stop your project and, and even do some troubleshooting remotely. Now that requires a piece of software on the remote runtime. And we provide that uh, piece of software. We call that, let me just go ahead and load this up here. It's the remote management tool. And how you get to that is you would go to where IndieSoft Web Studio is actually installed. And that's usually on C, Program Files, x86, wonder where IndieSoft Web Studio version 8, if you have version 8. It's just under IndieSoft Web Studio version 8, uh, I'm sorry, version 7 or 7.1 if it's a previous version. Um, it wouldn't have the Wonderware brand name in front of that. But if you go into that folder, in the bin folder, you're going to find, if you scroll down just a little bit, this program called CEServer.exe. And this is like the other half of this remote, remote management tool. And when you log on to this or run this, again, this is how you can connect the development environment to the runtime station and be able to download your project. Well, if you're doing that across the Internet, you're going to want to set up uh, some of the security settings on here, uh, data protection, users, things of that nature. So just to make, make you aware that, that that is available. And if you have this live on the Internet, I would suggest that you don't have this running 100% of the time and live all the time unless you absolutely need that. Uh, so that's, that's uh, one thing to suggest. Another thing, or, or to bring that up, uh, is um, actually we have, uh, I just added a new symbol to the uh, IndieSoft website uh, a couple of weeks ago. Let me bring this up off screen here and then I'll bring this into view. On the IndieSoft website, if you didn't know, we've got these free add-ons and we've got what we've been putting in here is a symbol of the week. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, I know there's a lot of symbols on here. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, we added a button on here to, to launch CE Server. So why have to navigate through all those folders? Just go ahead and, and click on that button, put that in a project, maybe put it behind a security uh, section uh, so only qualified personnel have access. But just wanted to make sure that you knew that that was available. And so that was the first item there with um, remote agent. Another thing that we have when you set up some of the thin clients, let me bring this back in here. If you go to Project uh, Web, and my menu appears off on my other monitor. Let me bring that in. This is how you can configure um, where your data comes from for the web thin client, and I believe uh, this can also influence Secure Viewer. I'm not 100% sure on the Secure Viewer, and I don't think this affects Studio Mobile Access. But for WebSyn client, you can use this, um, enable this IP security, and then put IP address uh, addresses or ranges in here to basically filter out unwanted traffic uh, into that uh, FIN client. So that's uh, another uh, possible way to handle some security there. And uh, via email. Now, this was uh, an important feature we added a couple of years ago. If you have email set up, there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can configure the email uh, client side of this by clicking on this menu and then setting up enable SSL and setting up the uh, authentication. So 
lots of different security options there. This is really required if you're going to be sending email through Gmail or Hotmail uh, type accounts. They require that SSL to be enabled. This is one way to configure your uh, SMTP or Simple Mail Transfer Protocol configuration. You can also do this with a script command so that it can be changed during runtime. Uh, that's another thing that you can do, but just to make sure that you're aware that we can enable SSL there uh, as well. Uh, something that I don't have on my slide that I can show you is on this web uh, access here. Uh, I, I didn't point this out a second ago. Uh, uh, let's see, here under advanced, you can set up web tunneling gateway. So if you're using, for example, uh, Microsoft IIS to publish your uh, web pages, uh, you can set this up to go through port 80. But if you want to um, have the graphics go through port 80 and the data goes across port 1234, if you want all of them to go across port uh, 80, you can set this up as web tunneling gateway. And then instead of going across port 80, you can also set this up as, a, as an SSL port and have it go across port 443. So it adds that other layer of kind of HTTPS that you've seen on probably a lot of different uh, uh, websites. Um, so I'm going to cancel out of that, cancel out of this, and move this off screen. I also want to talk about some security in OPC. So if you configure uh, an OPC worksheet, for those of you who are not aware, in IndieSoft, one of the one of the big features of the product is is the fact that we have so many drivers. We've got over 250 drivers. But if you have an occasion to use an OPC uh, uh, server, a third-party OPC server, when you configure our client connection to that, you can right-click here, and we can set up a name, for example, and then go into security. You can create your own self-signed certificates that you would have to put on the server as well as on the, the local runtime or you can uh, purchase those from a third-party uh, uh, certificate generating uh, facility if you want to, uh, and we can handle those as, as well. So uh, just to let you know that those, those features are available in the OPC configurations. And once again, let's go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Documents. Now, this isn't really kind of a security type feature, but this uh, allows you to lock down screens, scripts, worksheets, et cetera, to protect uh, from unprying eyes. For those of you who are machine builders or maybe system integrators, uh, the way we have this set up is, for example, if you've created a screen or maybe you have some, some scripting on a screen and you want to protect that, maybe that script is, is your intellectual property and it what, it's what makes your machine or your system special well, what you can do is you can actually set this up. Uh, so let me save this screen here real quick. Let me put uh, uh, just an object on the screen so I can save it. And when I save this, we'll do main. Now I can go over here to this menu and right click and you can see there's password protection. This will give me the ability to lock down editing of this screen or the script uh, so that uh, your competitors can't be uh, given your source code, so to speak. Your customer can still copy that, that project and it'll work just fine. They just won't be able to, to, to steal your intellectual property. Uh, so that's another, another portion of that uh, there. And another one is running on an embedded operating system. One of the things that, that Indusoft does really well is we scale to running on different operating system. It could be a Windows desktop, it could be a Windows Server, it could be a Windows Embedded Standard 7 operating system, or even a Windows CE operating system, or even Linux. And on some of those embedded operating systems, the vendor, the hardware manufacturer, whoever installs the operating system, they get to choose which features on the hardware are built into the operating system. For example, somebody building an industrial computer that, that might not ever want um, USB ports exposed, they might be able to take the USB support completely out of the operating system. You wouldn't be able to use your USB ports, but then you'd be protected from, from vulnerabilities uh, as well. And you could remove things like optical drives and, and things of that nature. Um, I, I don't know if many of you are aware of the Stuxnet virus that happened a few years ago, but uh, what I heard was that it was actually 
compromised uh, by somebody personally sticking in a USB stick into uh, a computer. And uh, this could have been prevented if there was policies in place, if there were no USB ports on that particular computer or they were turned off. So those are options and maybe some really good reasons for running an embedded operating system so that those, those features could be turned off. Uh, I do know that we have some other features uh, that we've recently uh, implemented on, on some drivers. For example, the MQTT driver that is often used for the industrial Internet of Things. We recently added security and, and into that um, uh, uh, driver. And so we're always looking to improve security in the product. And, and uh, oh, you know, one of the things I didn't even bring up, probably the biggest thing, is the security features, um, uh, the actual security built into the product. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, when you build a project, you can go here under Global Security, right-click Settings. And this sets up your uh, users and groups. First of all, you have to enable your security system. And then there's really only, even though there's four uh, radio buttons here, there's really only two different types of security. The Indusoft built-in security, which you can run local only or distributed. And then if you configure a server and multiple clients, those are really kind of using the same security system, but the clients would then authenticate against one single server. Uh, second type of security system is, is what's called LDAP, and that's the protocol uh, that is supported by Microsoft Active Directory. So if you, if you have a system, you or your customers have a system that um, is using Microsoft Active Directory, why create those usernames and passwords? Why not just jump onto the, the corporate network and, and use the groups and, and usernames and passwords associated with those who have logged on to the network. So that's an option uh, there as well. And with that, uh, I've kind of shown everything that I want to show. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Giovanni. Um, Giovanni, I just unmuted you. Are you there? Thanks, Scott. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Giovanni Pucci from Kaspersky. Uh, I'm the head of uh, Critical Infrastructure for Latin America. Uh, and today I want to present to you uh, a new stage of Kaspersky. Kaspersky, everybody knows in the market like a supplier or a vendor from the endpoint, but now Kaspersky has a new step in the Kaspersky. Now it's a new branding of a cybersecurity vendor. Uh, and now I will tell you about the Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity. It's about the kicks. But what's the history about kicks? Uh, the Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity. Uh, Kaspersky, just to, to let you know, they, they founded in 1997 uh, by Eugenio Kaspersky. Uh, we have uh, numbers of 700 million US dollars global audit revenue in 2014, and we have some achievement the large private owned cybersecurity company. Uh, we have some uh, relation with the Interpol and most of tested most of our orders and most protection in the uh, strategic partner. Uh, what I, I come to hear within the soft and by Schneider Electric, it's talk about the industry 4.0. Uh, nowadays, all companies in the market uh, cannot uh, work anymore like in the old in the past. And nowadays, today, we have the IIoT, the Industrial Internet of Things. We have some streaming, additive manufacturing, and all companies are going in this direction and not to revert anymore. We need the Internet to work inside of our plants, to do reports, to have every time at we need reports on time. We have to, to go to our company, to our plant, and have the, all the information in the same time that to, to respond in the same way about the production, about the stop the production, or increase the production. And what we have here, we have an example of the industrial facility architecture. Uh, all companies who have a segment network, like an office network, a plant DMZ network, SCADA's network, control network, and field bus. And how the ways that we can do in the, uh, the cyber criminals 
go to your plant and do a cyber attack. First point, we have the port from internet. Uh, the office network needs to work with the internet to, to add to the RP, the SIP, or something that we have in our plant, but they need to uh, internet connection. So the first step that you have is the internet, is the first port of the, the, the entrance from your company. In security internet connections, uh, we can have bad access rules from your firewalls from the plant DMZ network, from the SCADAs, and, and the other ones. Uh, other point that you can have is the security remote, remote support. We can do uh, infected USB keys. So uh, if I plug in a USB with a malware, with a virus in our office network or in our, our SCADA, network or in our station of the, the network, you can affect the plant. Uh, a communication between uh, office network, a uh, computer in our office network, directly from the PLC, we can affect your plant. Uh, I security wireless. If you are, it's a normal wireless in a company or a 3, 3G, uh, more than 3G, more than 4G, you can have a security wireless in your company. Uh, we can affect it about the laptops inside of uh, your SCADAs and DCS network. Uh, we can affect by a PLC logic. So we have all these kinds of cyber attack vectors like a vulnerabilities nowadays in your plant. It's not isolated anymore. With it now the technology, the IIoT, with it the, the smartphones, the, the modern 3, 4G, we not more isolate area. And about the cyber treatment. Uh, recently, recently we have the real incidents in the, in the plants in the world, like uh, we can tell here about the malware that you have in Monju nuclear power plant uh, common center in Japan. Uh, they have an uh, infection via an engineering workstation. We have more than 42,000 documents and may were compromised. We have attack on steel works in Germany. It's an uh, um, attack from uh, the furnace of this steel work that they stopped and the attack got access to the CS throw the stolen credentials, leads to the massive physical damage because the firms have an explosion. Uh, we have more incidents like the energy distribu distribution suspended in Ukraine in December for 2015, and they have stopped the, uh, the, the supply of the energy for six hours downtime for more than 200,000 people affected. Uh, we have uh, in England, in March from 2016, a water plant treatment attack. They, they changed the water, composite, the water composition of the, 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 the waters and the, all the documents and services encrypted. And you have it in, in Germany, in April 2016, a nuclear plant infected with a malware. All the computers isolated from the network and also found a USB driver with a malware. And of the, the last one is the energy department from the Canada in December of 2016, with more than 2,078 systems compromised and revealed by communication security established. Uh, what I can, can show you, that it's not that Kaspersky uh, are saying that which has happened. It's all documentation is public. We can find it in the, the routers, we can find it in the Google. All this communication is free and public in the market, in the internet. And we have here from the Alliance Risk Barometer for 2017, the top 10 risk from 2017. The cyber incident in 2013 was the 13th in the list, it's not in the top 10. But since 2014, they are up in the top 10. 
And nowadays, in 2017, the cyber incidents are the third. But what you have about cyber risks and treatment? We have three, three kinds of uh, cyber treatment, uh, cyber risk and treatment. Destructive stuff actions, industrial frauds, and cyber weapons. Uh, we talk about our destructive stuff with have the intentional impact due the lack of cybersecurity awareness and sabotage. Industrial fraud, we have industrial spionage and operational staff fraud. And cyber weapon, government markets, unfair competitive advantage, and cyber holy games. Uh, Kaspersky has a large experience in the industrial area, in the industrial cybersecurity area, intrusion uh, scenario. And we have the experience how, uh, how, how time and how long uh, cyber criminals now can spend to do a, a cyber attack in your company. From eight hours for 48 hours, they can get connection to the control system network. After they enter inside of your network, in two or four hours, they can figure out the PLC or other control devices. After that, in two, maximum six hours, they can crack the PLC passwords. From eight for 20 hours, after for 20 hours before, we can retrieve the PLC configuration and analysis. From half an hour and two hours, malicious modifi uh, modifi modification of the control log logic, and then can cause an uh, emergency countdown. So in a short time, they can, after they enter in your system network, they can do an uh, emergency countdown in your company. So. We need to protect your network. We need to, to protect your SCADA system about the, all the firewalls. If you have a firewalls, we have to ensure that they are completely configured. If they have some uh, an open door, the cyber criminals will find. Because the cyber criminals, they have, the most that they have is time. And hours like uh, us, that we are employed from the companies, they just work eight hours. It's a normal uh, work day, a labor day, but uh, they have more than 24 hours to work to, to do. This is the incentive for the cyber criminals to, to go to your, mark, your industry. And of course, we have an uh, ICS fraud scenario that you have your employee or the, the people that you want to do this, uh, this kind of fraud scenario inside of your company. So they can find it, it can find out how to trick an automation system. Uh, for example, it's a company that, that uh, you fill it up, uh, empty tank truck arrive to the facility to fill it up with the gasoline. The, this, this guy can fill it up the tank with the petrol and concerning the fraud, but they changed all the configuration inside of your automation system. A full tank truck, leaves the facility with 2% more, but the, the register side of the company is just for 100%. And outside from the company, they can extract the overflow patrol and sell in the, mark, in the, the back market this 2% of the, the patrol that they fill it up overflow inside of your company. So this kind of thing, we, we don't have any uh, control if somebody wants to do like a, a fraud scenario. But uh, we are showing the model with uh, Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity, we can protect this kind of uh, solution. Uh, what we have about the solution structure, we have the services and the technologies for the Kaspersky. About services, we can pass it for you guys, the, the knowledge, the education and the intelligence that the customer has and share with you and then teach you how you protect your company, your data, and, your, and guarantee your, uh, the life of your company. 
And of course, we have the technology. The, we have uh, assistant malware, uh, we have centralized management that we protect, uh, protect uh, the in integrity of the control, the vulnerability management, intrusion prevention system, integration with other solutions. So everything we have mm, this kind of solution uh, now able in the market. So about the knowledge <clears throat> that we can discuss, we have the cybersecurity and our trainings. Uh, have the cyber uh, intelligence and simulation games to teach you how to protect uh, about the cyber attacks. So we have uh, advanced industrial cyber security practice. It's uh, for the IT OT guys. It's uh, a basic trainings. We have ICS penetration tests for professionals, and we have the ICS digital forensics for professionals. So we have three kinds of training uh, about knowledge meant to teach you how to protect about the cybersecurity. And I have the expertise about it to, to understand your company, where we have the vulnerabilities, how we have to protect inside of your company, inside of the industrial area. So we have the cybersecurity assessment that will give you a report from what kind of scatters do you have, what kind of PLC, uh, what kind of uh, network do you have, the protocols that are communication, uh, the solution implements, the solution maintenance, the incident response, all these kind of solutions are available with Kaspersky. And to understand the Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity Technology, uh, how, how you can implement in your architecture. It's the same architecture that I showed in the beginning. It's the, it's the normal architecture that we have in your plant. We can imagine that. So we, we are protecting the SCADA, the CS network with the control network. So we can install the uh, kicks for nodes in the stations that we have uh, a SCADA system uh, running. And of course, we have a uh, kicks for networks that you protect your network from the, all the attacks that you show in the beginning. And everything will be managed by a Kaspersky Security Center. All the information will be centralized in one point of information. So we have uh, this technology able for installing your architecture and protect your system and protect your network. So what kind of uh, protection we are talking about? We're talking about, about alarms. So in, in, in this kind of architecture, if you have a SCADA trying to do a communication with a CSC server's network connection, they will alarm you. If this SCADA try to connect a PLC, but this SCADA is not authorized to connect, to connect this kind of PLC, they will alarm you too. If a remote network connection try to access your PLC, the, uh, the software will alarm you. Internal network connection, they try to uh, connect your PLC, they will alarm the, the system. Uh, direct local connections, of course, they will alarm again. And you can control an alarms about the network. If you, inside of your network we you have uh, somebody that you try to use a fact USB key, they will block. If they use an allowed wireless, Try to share the internet from your uh, smartphone or try to, to plug in uh, 3G, 4G modem, they will block. Uh, in security remote access from the PLC and the SCADA, they will alarm you. In fact, PLC logic, they will alarm you. Uh, they try to, to log in. Uh, to plug in a uh, control for a joystick for play some game in, in, inside of your factory, they will block it because it's the, the, here not the correct way to run like a games. 
Uh, if you try to infect you uh, like a malware, the system have an anti-malware attack that you blocked you. So the Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity for Nodes, they have uh, the device control, they have the vulnerability assessment, they guarantee the PLC integrity check, they run in a high available mode, they have a computational load reduce, they have the ICS vendor certified, and of course, about the compatibility. In the soft and Schneider Electric are compatible with our SCADA solution and PLC to running. So if you try to install in your plant, in your, together your SCADA system, together your network, we don't have any problem with the false positives. It's the, the main problem that we have when you try to, to install some kind of cybersecurity for SCADA in the, in the same computer that you have the SCADA running or the servers running, is the compatibility. Uh, the false positive, the, the identify the, the, the hard key is the protection from the, the SCADA system. They you create a false positive saying that, hey, it's a, a problem. We have a USB here that's not allowed. So you have to be open USB, and you can be uh, like a vulnerability from an employee. You bring a USB from your house with some video or some material or some, um, uh, some malware inside of some file and can infect your plant. And to have the Kasperic Security Center centralized measurement. All this information from Kix4 networks, from Kix4 nodes, from your control network, from your SCADA network, you'll be centralized in Kaspersky Security Center. Uh, all this kind of uh, communication, industrial communication, as the ESC, the OPC, uh, the Ethernet, they are available to connect, they are available to compatible for running inside of your plant and all this information will be centralized one more time in the Kaspersky Security Center. And of course, they can integrate with the other solutions like the CN, that we have the syslog, we have the mails, we have the CEF 2.0, we have the KSCs, and of course, when you have this, the second uh, layer, that you have the RP and MES. And of course, if you have like an upstream KSC in your plant, your corporative area, we can do a centralized communication with the, the whole plant, the industrial area and the, corporation, the, corp, the corporative area. And just to provide you a satisfaction of our clients that you have installed, I, I present to you some uh, success case that we have in the market. Uh, the first company here is the Ciavars. It's a chemical plant that provides safe transport for toxic chemicals. And uh, Kaspersky Industrial Cybersecurity meets our requirements in full and has also enable functions such as device controls as well as centralized control and monitor of the protection unit. It's uh, words from Roman Yukonov, uh, technical director for CFRs in Russia. So the, the customer is very satisfied with the, the software. Uh, all, they don't have more problems with uh, smartphones, USB, uh, external, HD, they are safe now with uh, Kaspersky solution inside of the, the plant. Uh, the other company, it's a, a petrochemical plant, it's Taneco. Taneco, they, they have a customer satisfaction about the unauthorized connections. Uh, Marathi Gitti, the head of the industrial control system department, they said the performance of Kaspersky industrial service security exceeded all our expectations. Just months after the deployment, the solution detects an authorization connection empty by outside laptop to one of the controllers. Uh, one station from the Taneco uh, are, are sent some kind of information from the SCADA system that they have inside of the company to other country. So he don't know 
what, what kind of disconnections, it's not authorization connections, but all these uh, authorization connections are blocked by kicks. Uh, guys, thank you very much for the time. It's all that I want to present to you by today, but uh, I know that you have some kind of uh, open questions now, but if you don't have time to answer all the questions that you have to hear today, here are my contacts. You can contact me directly by my email or by my cell phone, but uh, here I, I don't put, but uh, I have to insert it here in the presentation. I believe Belinda and Scott will be available in the in the soft website. So if you can share all this information with the, all the participants for all the attendance, will be you'll be nice. Giovanni, thank you very much. Yes, we'll, we will post this presentation. Actually, you're going to have to send us your updated presentation. We'll post that. We'll report, we will also post the recording of this. It usually happens in a couple of days. Uh, we'll post my presentation, your presentation. Uh, we got some compliments coming back. Very good. With that, uh, I'm just going to leave a slide up for a second. If you need uh, uh, any uh, assistance, let us know. You can send us an email. You can call us. You can chat on our website. Uh, let us know. And uh, somebody sent you a sp specific message, Giovanni, uh, and said, "Great, um, great product uh, all, as always." So, uh, Giovanni, with that, I, I think we're going to go ahead and end it because we have uh, no questions uh, in. So, thank you very much. We really appreciate it.